from 1965 and the first Amicus anthology horror movie, Dr. Terror's House of Horror, is now available for Vinegar Syndrome on, yep, 4K. And it is, as expected and as usual, a phenomenal 4K. It looks amazing. I am a particular fan of anthology horror movies, if done right, because there get so many great stories going on here. Sure, some probably won't hit you, but if the majority to work well, I'm happy. And it's all about the wrap room story for me. I feel that that has got some really strong connective tissue. It holds all these stories together. And I rather like the one in Dr. Terrors, because it's all about a train journey. We have five people on a train, Dr. Terror turns up to take the sixth seat and as they converse and talk he tells them about his house of horrors his tarot cards that can tell uh, someone's demise and how they can escape it this deck can forewarn us i call it my house of horrors and from that point on we start to go through the five patrons that are on uh, this train as they hear tales of their destruction. Simple. It's a simple setup. And uh, yeah, you get five tales here, which are all pretty good. So uh, Neil McCallum is the first person he is in the story of Werewolf, where he's going back to the Scottish Highlands, uh, to his old ancestral home to do some architectural work. Then he discovers a, a myth about a werewolf's and a 2000 year old curse that's about to come true. I really like this one. I could see this one being expanded into a much longer, much fun, much more fun uh, feature length film because it just has this wonderful kind of air about it. And I don't know whether it's the Scottish tangent or whether it's just a good werewolf tale or the little twist in the, the tale of this one that really just kind of sparks my imagination. I love the setting, the house, the idea. Everything about it just for me works and is for me probably my favourite of the stories. I make bullets, silver bullets. When that coffin opens tomorrow night, I'll be waiting. Second tale, we have Alan Freeman and Creeping Vine, which is all about a family returning home and there is a weed in the garden, a weed that starts to grow exponentially and starts to take over and seems to be sentient. It's a wonderful idea. It's colourful. It's bright. It feels like an almost sitcom setting at some point because of just the stage it's, it's built on. And the idea of it is really playful and fun. There is a little bit of hokiness and silliness around the effects. But ultimately, I don't care because it's another one of these quick, punchy tales, um, which is unexpected. A little bit different. Uh, thirdly, we have Voodoo with Roy Castle. This one is all about a, a man, a musician, who goes to the West Indies, who hears a beat when he sees a voodoo ritual and decides he's going to incorporate that into his music. Uh, even though he's warned several times not to do this, he continues to do it and the ramifications will be damned. Or he will be damned at the end of it. It's really fun. Um... It's a kind of silly one. I love the musical aspect of this. I don't think the payoff is great uh, in this one. It's it's interesting, it's fun, it's quick. And it's one of those anthology ones that I'm happy to watch, but it's not my favourite of the bunch. You wrote down the sacred music of the great god Dambella. <sighs> it, could be, it could be a hit. Uh, the disembodied hand... It's Christopher Lee's story, uh, and it's all about an art critic, an art critic who is a horrible person, and Christopher Lee gets to portray this man who's so up on his own opinion, uh, probably channeling critics that I'm sure he met along the way, as he teases and berates other people's work, that is until an art uh, gallery owner plays a prank on him, and he becomes a laughing stock, and this man keeps turning up at Christopher Lee's uh, moments where he's the centre of attention 
and keeps bringing him down just by reminding him of how he was taken in by this wonderful prank. And you get to see a character really unravel here. A man that can't take the criticism that he is so willing to give out. And this is the aspect of the movie that I really love. A character who, as a career, criticises other people. But when he's in the butt of it, can't take it at all. And it leads to some really nice twisting and turning, some really nice effects, and an interesting kind of finale. And again, another one we finish off with here is Donald Sutherland's story, um, Vampire, which I feel could really be expanded into something bigger because it's it's one that captures my imagination of a man who's just married, who brings his French wife back to the little country where he uh, lives, little town in America. Um, and there seems to be a spate of people who are anemic, losing blood, who don't seem to have enough energy and they feel as if there's a plague put in the land and I don't want to talk about this too much because I feel like there's a really great twist and turn in this one that just makes it fun and engaging and different to what I expected. I would love to have seen like this kind of expanded into something bigger. It just feels like there's more there to be mined uh, and a kind of really great finale on this one. If these were medieval times, I'd, I'd almost say he was the victim of a, a vampire. Dr. Terror's House of Horrors has six great tales, the five main uh, stories in the wraparound tale, and I feel they're all really punchy and quick. It almost sets up the, the, the way that Amicus would deliver their anthological movies over the next number of years, um, where some of them are better than others but they all had interesting aspects to them and it brings together a wonderful cast of characters who all do tremendous work. They're quick, it's punchy stories, they're entertaining and if you don't like it, it's 10-15 minutes and then we're on to the next one but you can't really grumble with that. As I said, uh, the transfer on this disc is absolutely fantastic. I've seen this film a number of times. It's one I appreciate more and more. And seen it on 4K, I was just like, wow, that looks tremendous. I'd love to know your thoughts uh, on Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. Whether you love it, hate it, fall somewhere in the middle. Where do you think it lands on the Amicus Anthological Horror Series uh, list? Personally, I still think that Asylum's my favourite out of them all. Pretty sure that, but I'd love to know what your favourite is. So let me know in the comment box below. As always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff in the description box below are links to Patreon, membership program, mandyfilm.com. Always in which you can support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.